Career Services brings you resume writing. What exactly is a resume? A resume is a sales brochure and not an autobiography. A resume enables you to get an interview. It also serves as a basis for discussion. How much time do employers spend on reading resumes? Employers do not read all of the resumes they receive. Each resume gets a quick glance. If a resume is too long, wordy, or disorganized, it gets filed in the wastebasket. Effective resumes are usually one page long. They are free from spelling, grammatical errors, and also easy to look at. It's important to target your resume for the job. Create a professional profile based on the specific position you are applying for. Include only the expertise, experience, training, and skills that apply to that position. Here are some rules for resume writing. It's always important to be relevant, concise, and consistent. Consider the employee's perspective. This means what skills, abilities, interests, experiences, and personal characteristics do you have that will meet the employer's needs. Here are some resume basics. Make sure your resume is usually one page in length. Use simple, everyday, standard language. Be positive and enthusiastic. Avoid fancy type or other difficult styles to read. Always proofread for spelling and grammar. On the main heading of your contact information section, it is no longer customary to use your personal address in professional correspondence. The hiring manager does not need your physical address unless it's time to put you into their system, at which point they'll ask for it. Also, you're providing your address can lead to unfair bias depending on your socioeconomic and personal perceptions. The executive profile summary. This section should be three to five sentences long and use a strong mix of soft skills and powerful verbs, adjectives, and industry language to accurately describe what you bring to the table. You should review the job descriptions and identify the core requirements sought from the employers. In the core competencies section, you want to ensure that you are concise, but also use creative adjectives if possible, such as persuasive negotiator or engaging communicator. Limit your use of soft skills unless you are new to the market or you have limited experience. It is no longer standard to include your graduation dates on your resume. It can open you up to unfair bias and assumptions by the hiring manager that are not relevant to your qualifications. It is recommended to include your graduation date for a recent grad who has minimal professional experiences. Under your experience section, it is important to note that the most weight and relevance, especially from ATS scans, is placed on your most recent 10 to 15 years experiences. So you want the bulk of your resume's content to highlight your most current experiences. Though your earlier career experiences paint a broader picture of your career and skill sets, it doesn't add a great deal of value to your current capacities and goals. You should highlight your licenses and certifications on your resume, in addition to your computer skills. I would list computer skills as technical proficiencies include Microsoft Office Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Outlook. If you have language skills, be sure to list them as bilingual fluency, for example, in Spanish and English. As far as your resume checklist goes, make sure it's easy to read. You put the most important information first. It's consistent. Do not use pronouns such as I or we. Your jobs are listed in reverse chronological order, which means the most recent first, and your employer focused on academics, experience, and leadership. It used to be standard to either include up to three references at the bottom of your resume or included a statement that read references available upon request, but that is no longer the case. Not all hiring managers will require references, and those that do will ask for them separately, either during the application and or hiring process.